As expected, Wyan Costa re-elected as Bali's governor for another five-year term. And good news for travelers, airline ticket prices dropped 10%. Asita says it's a bit late. Stay tuned for details on these and other stories. Selamat pagi. Welcome to the latest news from Bali, Indonesia. This is November 29th, 2024, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? Right now at 8.30 in the morning, it's 29.4 degrees Celsius, humidity 75%, and wind speed 3.4 kilometers per hour. And we've had a little rain over the past few days. Not a lot here, but you know, there are many different microclimates in Bali. And so it can be dry here, and just over a few kilometers to the west, it can be pouring. But here in Kampung Bugis, pretty dry still. And the haze has lifted finally, but it is cloudy. And so we're just about at December, and well, is the rainy season here? I talked about this the other day, I think in the last video, about the possibility of a lot of rain and intense rain. But we'll just have to see what happens. So, election is over, and let's see what has happened. Wayan Costa re-elected as Bali's governor. The preliminary vote totals show that Wayan Costa and Yeoman Giri Prasta, running respectively for governor and deputy governor of the province of Bali, have defeated by a large margin Made Muliawan Arya and Putu Agus Saradnyana. Based on the preliminary real count, the winning team has claimed 61.44% of the vote. Wow. The early quick count is based on votes tabulated from 6,092 Bali polling stations, representing 89.65% of the total polling places in the province. The winning ticket, representing the PDIP party, secured a preliminary tally of 1,267,001 votes, while the Mulia Pass ticket, from the Gurinda Party received 795,018 votes. The Gurinda Party is nationally chaired by the president. With 89.65% of the votes counted, Bali's incumbent, incumbent governor, Wayan Coaster, has claimed victory, saying any remaining ballots, primarily from the regencies of Bulaleng and Guyanier, will not alter the voting trend, which is essentially a landslide victory, he said. Meanwhile, the losing ticket has ceded the race to Costa Prasta, acknowledging the final count will not upend the substantial lead held by the PDI candidates. This means that so far we have fought as hard as we can. We have fought with all of our efforts and we have fought with our resources. So while not 100% of the polling places have reported in, 80% of the votes are counted and it won't be easy to catch up. We therefore congratulate Mr. Costa and... Giri Prasta. This is from Digaja when he was conceding the race. Digaja continued by saying he hopes Costa and Giri will successfully carry out their duties to uh, public servants and be more pro people. Ooh. The former deputy chairman of the Dempasar DPRD asked Costa Giri to be responsible for their programs and campaign promises. Saying that he was relieved that the governor's race had ended, Digaja added, We guarantee there will be no friction in our social media. We guarantee that, as our promise, struggle is struggle, struggle for better change, meaning that the will of the people, the mandate of the people, have indeed chosen him, Pat Koster. We are grateful to have been given the opportunity in this comp competition, and we will continue to fight for the people's interests. The winning team won the majority of votes in the eight regencies of Bali. The city of Dempasar was virtually a dead draw, with the winning team gathering 50.5% of the vote and the losing team 49.95%, but still votes to be counted, of course. And the new governor, well, he, he was the governor before for five years. He's been re-elected. He's 62 years old now. He served as governor from Bali, for those of you that don't follow Bali politics, from 2018 to 2023. He is born up here in the north. He is from Bulaleng, and he has a bachelor's degree in mathematics from the prestigious Bandung Institute of Technology, 
a master's degree from the International Golden Institute, 1995, and a doctorate from the Jakarta State University, 1999. He served as a member of the People's Representative Council for three terms from 2004 to 2018 when he resigned to successfully run for Bali's governorship. I didn't know he had a PhD. While serving as governor, he launched a Plan on Plastic champion the local Arak alcohol, you may remember that, production and consumption, and canceled Bali's participation in the FIFA U20 World Cup to protest the possible involvement of Israeli athletes in match play. And Pat Koster has been big on infrastructure development during his five years, and he's talked about that in his campaign that if he is re-elected, that he was going to continue on finishing the projects that he had started. One of the big ones, of course, is the toll road, the one from Gilimanuk to Mengui. And, of course, he's got this one here that goes through Singaraja, the shortcut, and he's going to finish that up. And he has a lot of infrastructure going on. And, well, is he going to be doing something about the waste problems? Let's hope so. And what about construction around the island? There are a lot of problems that need to be dealt with. And it will be interesting to see what he does now that he's got another five years. So, good luck, Governor Coster. And what about ticket prices, airline ticket prices, right? This has been a problem for a long time. Airline ticket prices dropped 10%. Asita says it's a bit late. Why is it a bit late? Because it's going to be December in two days. Deputy Chairman of DPP Asita, Association of Indonesian Travel Agencies, Pak Budi, welcomed the governor's policy of reducing domestic airfares by 10% during the 2024-2025 Christmas and New Year Nataru period. However, he considered the policy inappropriate, intended to be too late. We appreciate the government's move, but there is pessimism because this policy seems too late. On average, tickets for travel during the Nataru period have been purchased two to three months in advance. According to him, the Nataru moment is the peak season with high travel demand, so lowering ticket prices at a time like this feels a bit odd. A policy like this is more relevant if it's implemented consistently after the Nataru period. What we hope is that a reduction in ticket prices is just not a temporary measure. Starting from January 2025 onwards, policies like this need to be implemented sustainably. There's that word sustainably again. That way, the tourism sector can feel a more significant impact. However, Asita believes that the decrease in ticket prices will still have a positive impact on Indonesia's tourism sector. With more affordable ticket prices, domestic tourist destinations have the potential to become the main choice for the community. We are optimistic that if this policy continues and is consistent, the tourism sector will grow more rapidly, concluded Pak Budi. This policy is also part of the government's efforts to support the growth of the air transportation and tourism sectors amid various challenges. The government estimates that the impact of the policy can save up to 472.5 billion rupiah during the Nataru holiday season. As is known, the reduction in airline ticket prices was announced by the Coordinating Minister for Infrastructure and Regional Development. This reduction involves three main interventions, namely a 50% discount on airport service rates, 5.3% reduction in aviation fuel prices, and an 8% reduction in fuel surcharges for jet engines. This intervention is claimed to be able to reduce ticket prices by up to 9.9% with an average savings of 157,500 rupiah per ticket. So, good news if you are living here and you want to travel around during the holidays. Good news if you're coming here and you also want to travel around. There is a lot more to see in Indonesia than just this island. And just close by, Lombok is a great place to visit. Go a little farther, go to Sumbawa. You can go to Java. Jogja is a great place to visit as well. Go to the Malukus. And from what I'm reading online, well, Raja Umpat has really become one of the places to go. So maybe we can ship our Instagrammers from Bali and ship them over somewhere to the east. But good news, and let's hope that that airfare drop stays permanent. Apple's U.S. $100 million investment proposal does not meet four aspects of fairness, Indonesian minister says. Indonesian industry minister Agus Gumiwang has said that 
as per a technocratic assessment conducted by his ministry, Apple's $100 million investment proposal does not meet four aspects of fairness. The four aspects are Apple's investment in other countries, right, we're getting less in other countries, investment recorded in other brands of mobile phones, handheld computers and tablets in Indonesia, the creation of added value and state revenue and jobs created from the realization of the investment. Based on the technocratic assessment, the investment amount has not met the figure that we consider fair, he said on Monday. His ministry calculated the figure considering that the profits obtained from the sale of Apple products in the domestic market is quite large. Furthermore, he asked Apple to fulfill the remaining investment commitment for 2023, which amounted to U.S. $10 million. Apparently they owe the government $10 million. Bucks. The remaining payment for the commitment is not a part of the new proposal. The discussion of the new proposal applies to Apple's obligation to obtain a domestic component level certificate in 2024 to 2026. The minister said that Apple is obliged to discuss the proposal every three years as a consequence of the investment decision chosen with an innovative innovation scheme to obtain a TKDN certificate. Earlier, the industry ministry said it expects Apple's investment value in Indonesia to be in excess of $100 million. As a government, of course, we want it to be bigger, the ministry spokesperson said on the 21st. The large investment value will allow the domestic manufacturing industry to enter Apple's global supply chain. Moreover, the industry will support larger labor absorption and therefore have a real impact on Indonesia society. So, I have to wait and see what Apple is going to do. Okay, and one more story for today. My voice is going out again. I can just not get over this flu. Government claims poverty rate in Buleng drops. Oh, good news. The regional government claims that the poverty rate in Buleng Regency fell in August 2024 to 5.39% from the previous 6.26% in 2023. Regional Secretary of Buleng Regency, Gede Siyasa, said that this was inseparable from the poverty alleviation programs that were being rolled out. Our poverty data last year was 6.26% and it's gone down to 5.83%. Then the latest poverty data in August 24 went down again to 5.39%. This is what we have to evaluate together and improve poverty alleviation programs in Buleng. So Yasa, who was also head of the Buleng Regional Poverty Alleviation Coordination Team, added that poverty as a whole is still a big problem to be solved. He acknowledged that there are many challenges in poverty alleviation in Buleng. The problem of poverty here in Buleng, he said, is caused by many factors, both from the culture of the recipients and also from the right target or not of the recipient of assistance. So we need to reevaluate the data. It's mandatory to create a short-term, medium-term, and long-term poverty alleviation scheme. On the other hand, he also gave appreciation for the cross-sectoral collaboration efforts and community involvement in supporting programs related to nutrition and healthy lifestyles. This was said to have yielded results with a decrease in the prevalence of stunting. Ah. Initially 11 fell to 6.2 in 2023, then down to 3.5 in February. And stunting is a big problem, not just in Buleng, but throughout Indonesia. And so, poverty programs having an effect here. That is good news. And as you know, if you've watched these videos regularly, Buleng is one of the biggest regencies and also one of the poorest. And that's why there is so much talk about spreading out tourism from the south to the north. Okay, that is it for today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about waste. Well, hopefully tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Sunday. Depends on what's going on with the weekend and how many kids are going to show up here and how many grandkids. You know, it's always busy here on the weekends in the compound. And so, thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Take care, and I will see you next time.